Hey everyone, Justin here from Aquavita Woodworks and welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to be showing you how I use my desktop CNC machine to build this Montessori style ball and ramp toy. This is a really easy project and only uses a few other woodworking tools other than the CNC. If you're curious how I made it, stick around and I'll show you how I did it. Like most of my projects, I started off in SketchUp, which is the 3D modeling program that I like to use. I designed this project so that the CNC would carve dados for the side panels to insert into the bottom base and top cover. If you look closely, you can see I needed to add dog bones because the round CNC bits can't carve into the corners. Once my design is finalized, I can lay out the components on the same plane. That way I can export them using DXF files into my CAD program of choice, which is Carbide Create. From there, I can start assigning toolpaths. I do have a full CNC guide with SVG files available on my Etsy shop for this project, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on all the components, but what you can see on the screen right now is the top cover. This project only uses pocket toolpaths and contour toolpaths to carve all of the components. A quarter inch down cut bit, a half inch bowl bit, and an eighth inch down cut bit are all the bits that you'll need in order to carve this project. I do want to mention that the 8th inch downcut bit that I'm using for this project was provided to me by High Country Tools, which is a new company that reached out to me and asked me to try some of their bits. Uh, so far so good, I've used it and I can say that it is pretty amazing. Uh, the prices are great for the bits compared to other ones I've got and the quality is just as good if not better. Uh, if you're interested in CNC bits, I highly recommend that you check their company out uh, and if you want a discount, use the code AVW10 to get 10% off. Go check them out, it's definitely worth it. Now that my toolpaths are set up and saved, I can start cutting out all the materials I need to build this project. Using wood purchased from my local big box store, within a few minutes I had all of my materials prepped according to my cut sheet. The ramps and the rails will not be carved on the CNC, but the bottom base, the top cover, and the sides will all be carved on the machine. To kick off the project, I started sanding the rails because I wanted to apply stain and let those dry while I'm carving everything else on the machine. I'm using Minwax Red Mahogany, but you can use whatever stain that you like. I gloved up and grabbed a brush and a paper towel to start applying the stain to all these rails. Once I had them done, I set them aside and started working on the ramps, which will require a two and a quarter inch hole saw to carve a hole on one end. Following the measurements from my build instructions, I marked a hole using a pencil on each of the five ramps before moving over to the drill press. From there, I used the hole saw to drill about halfway through each piece before flipping them over and attacking it from the other side. This method, along with cleaning the teeth in between cuts, helps limit the amount of burning. Once complete, we can finally move on to using the CNC machine. Here you can see me clamping the base to the machine using my corner square so that my X and Y points are always constant and clamping it down with four different clamps. Once everything's nice and secure, I can use the touch probe to set my Z height. From there, I can just sit back and watch the machine do its thing. Once everything is carved and off the machine, we need to remove the tabs using a multi-tool from the side components. Once that's done, this is what we're left with. So far so good. Up next, I want to make everything nice and pretty, so on the base here, I round over the corners, marking them with this fancy corner jig that I made, before moving over to the bandsaw and cutting them out. Once the corners are cut roughly outside my lines, I move over to the spindle sander to sand them down to the exact measurements. Next, I take the top cover, the ramps, and the bottom base over to the router table where I'm going to use a quarter inch round over bit to make the edges nice and smooth. For the top cover, we're gonna go around both top and bottom, and the base we're gonna go over just the top, and the ramps we're gonna go over the top and bottom of only the holes that we drilled. From there, gather all the components that you've carved and worked on so far, and get to sanding. I sanded up to 220 grit sandpaper, but you can sand up to whatever grit that you want. 
And as you sit there and watch me sand, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying this video, and leave me a comment if you have any questions or video suggestions that I should make in the future. Anyway, let's get back to assembling this sucker. The first thing that I like to do before gluing this up is to do a dry assembly so that I know how everything is going to be oriented. These sides can be kind of tricky since they look really similar, but they do need to be oriented in a specific way. Obviously, you need the ramps tilted down so that when you drop the ball in from the top, everything will flow downward. Once you're satisfied with how everything's lining up, you can start gluing everything into place. I start with the sides and the bottom base using wood glue, and then adjusting everything with one, two, three blocks to make sure that they're square. From there, I add the top cover, and then use CA glue to add the ramps. I suggest that you use the wood glue for the top cover and the base, and then the CA glue for these ramps, just because they really don't need to be held too securely into place, since the rails will be nailed over them at the end. In order to add those rails, I don't use glue, since it would be a little bit messy, and I think it would end up looking worse. I just use some half-inch brad nails after laying the whole piece down flat on the table, and nailing them in with three nails on each rail. Just line everything up by finger feel, and it should be good to go. Once those are nailed into place, the assembly is complete. Before I started adding the finish to this project, I added these 2-inch wooden balls that I purchased off Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. You could probably make these on a lathe if you really wanted to, but it's definitely way easier just to purchase them online. Uh, anyway, I'm going to add some cutting board oil to this project because it's food safe. Uh, this is kind of a pain to add in the end, but just put on some gloves and start rubbing it all over this project. Take your time and make sure to cover all the surfaces. Once that's done, just let it dry and we're good to go. All right, we finished. Overall, this was a pretty fun project to make. Uh, the most annoying part was adding that cutting board oil. If you have a better way, let me know in the comments. But I'm happy with how it came out and uh, I'm actually gonna be donating this to my local preschool who's having an auction. Uh, so hopefully they like it. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and as always, hit the subscribe button if you like this video, uh, and maybe give it a like as well. We'll see you next time.